Okay, this is going to be a tutorial on uh, VTP or VLAN trunking protocol. And I'm going to show you how to configure and how to set up VTP and make VTP work. I'm using Packet Tracer, Cisco Packet Tracer, and this is for the Cisco CCNA. Now, VTP is a cool protocol. What it does is it allows, if you have a network with, let's say, a lot of switches in it, right, and you've set up a bunch of VLANs, so let's say you have like just a lot of switches right and you've set up a bunch of VLANs and you don't want to have to go from switch to switch then um, configuring all those VLANs on every switch in your large network right and if there's a change of VLANs if you have to add a new VLAN instead of having to go from switch to switch to switch adding that VLAN what you can do is, is use VTP and VTP will disseminate the VLANs and synchronize the VLANs with the other switches on the network. So it's ideal for a large network with lots of switches and it cuts down administrative overhead by allowing those um, VLANs to propagate from switch to switch using the VTP protocol. Now what we're going to do though is just try to get it to work by starting with just we'll just start with two switches right I've got two 2960 switches and we'll just try to make it work with two switches to start with. Now I'm going to connect them with crossover cables port 1 to port 1 right and there's no configurations on these switches I just drag them out right now right and so we're gonna make VTP work now we'll start by configuring it now we'll go into this switch and we're going to just go into it right off the bat here switch 0 and we'll say enable and then I'm going to do a show VTP and then a question mark and you can see here counters password status we'll say status right and so by default you can see that it says VTP version number is 2 uh, the configuration revision number is 0 meaning that probably doesn't have any revisions probably not activated right it's 0 because it's not not running yet um, it sees that the number of VLANs that are supported when you're running VTP is only 255 right now number of existing VLANs five well those are the probably the five default VLANs that come uh, enabled on the server by default VLAN 1 the default VLAN and then what is it 1000 uh, 2 3 4 and 5 right which uh, work with um, uh, token ring and FDDI right so there's five default VLANs so it sees five now the operating mode by default right we just this is a brand new server we just did a show VTP command by default the operating mode you can see that it's in server mode right so that's kind of important then this is important VTP domain you can see that there's no VTP domain set which essentially kind of disables VTP from working right a couple things we need to know is how does pruning mode work I'm gonna have to um, talk about that eventually um, anyway so show VTP right so there's nothing there right now now what I'm gonna do is I'll do a show VLAN to show you the VLANs now the VLANs are you can see 1, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005 now if we're gonna share VLAN information from switch to switch we need to make some VLANs so I'll do a configure TE tab terminal go to global config mode and I'll say VLAN 11 and then I'll say VLAN 22 and VLAN 33 and VLAN 44 right so I've just created right notice I'm in global config mode and then I'm in VLAN configuration mode and I just made VLAN 11 22 33 and 44 I'll do a control C hit enter and do a show VLAN and now you can see I have these VLANs now on the um, switch so now we're going to work with VTP so we'll say conf T which is short for configure terminal right and then we'll say VTP space question mark and there it is domain we want to set the VPT, VTP domain name so we'll say domain and I'll say my domain one right or we'll just say domain one right okay so now changing VTP domain name from null to domain one right let's do a VTP command again with a space and a question mark 
and you can see the mode configure the VTP device mode well we know that it's in server by default but let's check it out anyway so we'll say mode and then question mark and you can see there's the three modes client mode server mode and transparent mode right so this is important because by default we're in server mode and in server mode we're allowed to add create VLANs, delete VLANs, and essentially we're going to be the one as a server to disseminate the VLANs to the clients, right? So anyway, we don't really need to do anything here, but if we did, we'd say uh, server, right? But it says here device mode already VTP server, so we really didn't need to do anything there. Now, the other thing we're going to need to do now is we're going to need to go to the other switch and I'll go to the other switch this is the switch the second switch or switch one switch on the right and I'm going to enable and I'll do a conf T to get to global config mode and then I'll say VTP mode VTP this is more important VTP domain domain one to put it into the same domain same VTP domain. Then I'll say VTP mode client. So now it's in client mode. So now this has been set for client mode and it's part of the VTP domain and I didn't configure the VLANs on it because we want this switch to learn about the VLANs from the server. Right now the other thing we're going to need to do is right now this link right is by default going from port 1 to port 1 and the ports on the switch are by default in VLAN 1 right the default VLAN right so right now this is what we'd call an access link right it's an access link right now and we want to turn it into a trunk link so that it can trunk all the VLANs across the trunk right so we need to turn this link into a trunk on FA01 and FA01 so we'll go back to switch 0 and we'll in global config mode we'll say interface FA 0 slash 1 right and we'll say tab switch port um, and we'll say switch port mode trunk so we'll make it a trunk and then we'll say switch port trunk allowed VLAN 1 through 99 okay so now all the VLANs VLANs 1 through 99 are allowed on the trunk and we change the mode of the port to a trunk right now now by default the other FA01 port is in dynamic auto mode so it's going to turn into a trunk if this port is made a trunk the other port is automatically turned into a trunk right and so now VLAN information should be traveling across right so let's see if essentially it worked so we'll open up the switch here right and this is the switch that needs to learn about it We'll go to Control C and we'll do Show VTP Status, right? And you can see that the version is 2, right? Configuration revision number 0. And look, number of existing VLANs are not 5, which is default, it's 9. So it learned about 4 VLANs. It's in client mode. The domain name is domain 1, right? But it looks like it learned about the VLANs. Let's do a Show. VLAN command and you'll see that it learned VLAN 11, 22, 33, and 44 from it learned that from the other switch so it looks like it worked so now we have a trunk and we have VTP enabled and this switch is learning from this switch about the VLAN so well, let's see here alright so once again show VLAN, right? 11, 22, 33, 44. So let's do this. We'll go to switch 0 
and then we will do Control C, Conf T to get to global config mode, and we'll say um, VLAN. Well, let's add a VLAN. We'll add VLAN 77, right? So we just added a VLAN, right? So now do Control C. We'll do a show VTP status. You'll see that it's got a revision number of 1. It's got 10 VLANs on the switch. It's in server mode, domain 1, right? We'll go to the other switch now. Let's see if it learned about it. We'll hit, hit our space bar for more. Let's do a show VLAN again. There's VLAN 77, so it learned about it. And then we'll do a show VTP status, and you'll see that it's got the configuration revision number of 1 also. And so it successfully learned about the VLANs, right? So um, the other thing to remember is if we are to restart this switch, right, this switch does not store the VLAN information because it's in um, client mode, right? So as the client, it won't store VLAN information. If we restart this switch, it'll lose all its VLAN information, but it's no problem because it just needs to relearn it from the server, right? So this is the VTP server, right? And this is the VTP client.